Good evening and welcome to the first in a short series of videos exploring the Dungeon Alchemist Magic Update. My name is Sack. I'm a map maker. I don't work for Briganti or Dungeon Alchemist, but I want to thank them for the opportunity to explore the Magic Update early and get a few videos out. There's also going to be a couple of live streams on Monday the 10th and Tuesday the 11th of June. If you head over to my Patreon, patreon.com slash sackmaps, I will keep updating there as to where and when those will be it looks like they'll probably be about 8 p.m uh uk time which is bst so it'd be cool to see some people there uh, twitch.tv slash sacmaps so as this is an early access build there may be some bugs there may be some issues things might pop up that are a bit weird uh, maybe some strange graphics or you know that kind of thing this isn't the final release version any bugs will be reported and they tend to get squished pretty quickly so that's cool the magic update is due out on the 12th of june and oh boy it's exciting so today in the first video we're just going to have a quick look at probably the key feature of the magic update shaped rooms Curves, diagonals, raising and lowering building height, and moving buildings. So we've jumped onto a dark parchment, and anyone who's used to the dark parchment background will immediately see quality of life update. There is a border. Very handy. Before, you kind of had to, you know, take your best guess from the chevrons. So we're going to have a quick look at the actual how to do different shapes on the dark parchment. Then we're going to move on to grasslands and we're going to build a wizard's tower. And then we'll have a look at a pre-built map uh, just to have a bit of a, you know, a quick squiz. Other, other videos coming along will deal with new effects, new biome, new room types, water sponge, all sorts of cool things. So, you know, got to get those numbers up. I'm splitting them into separate videos. Rookie numbers. So we're going to make a wizard's tower. Now previously this was your tower. A square. Or you know add a couple of strange shapes on. But everything was very much straight lines. But as you can see these dots in the corner, these little handles, they affect the shape of the room and this is simply witchcraft the dungeon alchemist team have managed to i think it's actually uh carl who's managed to build this in i apologize if it's multiple people you're all amazing everything you need to do is done with this one tiny little dot and the mouse uh, left mouse button that's it everything's built in if you grab hold of the dot and pull it inwards you get a curve of varying degrees if you pull it outwards you get a cut out section and if you pull it diagonally you get diagonal walls now this can't be changed the key part of the building can't be changed after it's been generated there is however a uh, an undo button but if you're quite far into a map you can't then go back and change some curves you can add bits to the building if you decide you want a little bit at the back with a little curve that's no problem at all you can do that however once this has been generated if we go into the edit room the dots are no longer there the handles have gone if you add another piece you get the handles back which is nice however once you're committed that's kind of it other than control Z to undo that works for your previous interaction so that being said let's jump straight on to grasslands and we'll investigate this a little bit more and we'll also look at let's make it flat we'll also look at moving buildings up and down different heights 
So we're going to stick with a wizard's tower. We're going to allow all of the bells and whistles, all of the cool stuff. We've got objects, lights, flooring, doors, windows, all of that. So a big square, nine by nine. A wizard's tower, obviously, we're going to have it circular or as close as we can get to circular with nine by nine. It's, uh, have we? That's slightly weirdly oval. Let's make it slightly smaller. My brain doesn't work with large buildings. There we go. Pull it in. Got a nice round tower. Now, can you see on the left of the building, we've got up and down arrows moving up. The building is going to go to a higher elevation. The numbers at the side are very useful for showing you at what point uh, we've, what height we've reached. If you wanted to, for example, make a few buildings at the same height, you know, you pull them up to three, 3.1, two, everything will be at the same height. Similarly, if we drop it down, it goes into negatives and it works in exactly the same way. But a wizard's tower is going to be quite high. So we're going to put it all the way up to three. Now, I believe uh, this isn't confirmed. My brain is not good at retaining information. If you divide that in half, so three, I believe every 0 0.5 is one grid square, which in standard D&D or tabletop is five feet. I think Dungeon Alchemist use meters, but that's absolutely fine. You know, just convert to whatever. I always just treat it as five feet. So three should be about 30 feet up. Now, you'll notice we've also got a rotation button. If your building needs to be rotated, Grab the handles, pull it round. Similarly, click and hold, and you can just move your building wherever. You don't have to commit to build all of the buildings one at a time. So if we've got the wizard's tower here, possibly we can have, let's just have a diagonal cut building, sort of like a diamond. And we'll pop that next to it. That could be a pit, some sort of trap. Similarly, possibly there's a storefront, a way to keep people away from the actual tower, helping make a living. If we pull out any of these handles, we get a really nice curve. And the useful thing with these curves is that there is now furniture that fits into these curves. There are bookcases and windows and doors and similar that mean, yeah, you can just have a nice curved bookcase. So we've got one building at height. We've got one building down low and we've got one building just standard. Let's just go into top down for the moment and move them around a little bit. So we've got the tower, which is going to be at the back. We've got a little underground section and then some sort of possibly a little shop front. We'll turn that round slightly to face over there. So the wizard's tower itself, you'll notice that the terrain has automatically shaped itself. Doors, windows, all fit on. Any door, you can choose any old window and it will go along with the curve. You can choose any old door. If we've got a nice iron door. And similarly, they fit into the curve perfectly. If we just remove some of these, we can see a few of the new assets as well. This is the conjuration pedestal. 
we can stop it spinning if we want, but why would we? So this is a fantastic bookcase. However, we also have curved bookcases and they are very, very nice. Let's just see if we can pop one in to fit with the, uh, I don't know what angle this is. Oh, there we go. This looks more, more the style. I've just popped that in freehand. Stack it up with books, potions, wands, everything fantastic. So because I've built this tower now, the other buildings that I was demonstrating have vanished slightly. So we're going to put those back in. We've got a bottomless pit. Let's make that diagonal. Sort of diamond shape. There we go. It's ridiculously intuitive. Do you remember the old uh, iPhone adverts? Back in the very, very first iPhones, I think Steve Jobs and so on were worried that people wouldn't get it. People wouldn't know how to do things with their phone. And the strap line was, you already know how to use it. That's basically what it's like with these handles. They're very intuitive. Two seconds to poke around with them and you know how to make diamonds. You know how to make all sorts of things. So we've got a nice bottomless pit. Always handy if anyone's getting into uh, places they shouldn't be. And a shop front will have a nice curve, quite welcoming, unlike the pit. Have a nice curve. Generate the shop front on the, on the, uh, on the ground level. Turn it to a slight angle move it around to where we want it and we get a fantastic shop with beautiful curves windows and doors that just go straight in and lots and lots of new assets i love this guy the clay golem he is animated and slightly terrifying but I am going to show you my favorite asset. This guy is adorable. The gallivanting cauldron. Whatever this is, that can come off there because this guy needs center stage. Let's have a look at him. Hello. <laughs> he shows off. Now, the way I like to use animated objects is to take a video. <laughs> look at him is to take a video and use them in a journal on the vtt that i use uh, i personally use foundry but i've used roll 20 as well in the past create a journal with pictures and videos just so that players can get this first first uh, hand experience first person view of animated objects even things like doors opening the player wants to open the door, fantastic. There's an animation for that. And this is, <laughs> look at him go. This is just a beautiful room. Curves are what everyone's been waiting for. Diagonals, curves, raising and lowering the terrain is just an absolute game changer. And obviously with the lower terrain, it can be quite handy to Simply delete and then fill with water. And you've got a really nicely sculpted pond of blood or lava. Now, this button, the water sponge, I was going to show in another video, but let's just give it a poke here. Empty the water. If you start a map, such as a flooded Grand Canyon. If you want to create a variant where the water is gone, there's a drought or similar, you can simply suck up the water. 
that is that one snuck under the radar absolutely fantastic love that oh he's had a bit of a um well whatever he's had there so we've got raised lowered standard rooms curves diagonals cut out sections moving the rooms have a very quick look the very first map that i made using the new tools this is a major shop and home and as you can see there's an awful lot of curves unfortunately as i mentioned you can't change those curves once you have set them you can add new sections and add curves onto that and that is great so i hope that's been a helpful quick first look at the new dungeon alchemist magic update in regards to shaping rooms moving rooms up and down and moving them wherever you want them in the next video we're going to have a quick look at the new biome the fey plain and there's some weird stuff in there fantastically cool stuff but for now with sherlock bones having a walk through the major shop up to eliza i'm gonna say ta-da for now thanks for watching keep an eye out for more of the more of this uh, little series and hopefully the live streams on the 10th and the 11th remember the magic update launches on the 12th so not long at all thanks a lot for watching ta-da